All right. That was Beautiful Dreamer <coughs> by Stephen Foster. And when we all be, like to be asleep and dreaming right now. Hmm. Okay. Anyhow. But instead, we're here. And we're going to do a bicycle lab. That sounds like fun. Hope you brought your uh, spandex and uh, outfits suitable for back riding. All right. Now, you and I have to actually ride a bike. But... All right, we are going to talk about bicycles. First of all, you notice that in our bicycle, um, I don't have a picture on here, but we had on our paper yesterday, there is the gears in the front, which is connected by a chain to gears in the back. Um, this was a big improvement. Um, originally, they had uh, bicycles, which I may have put a video up for you, but they were called a penny farthing, because of the two coins in British. One was really big, one was really small, and... Uh, it basically came up here and had a seat up here. There's the handlebars, I guess, and you had a seat. And this was connected back to this one. And basically, you had pedals here, and you just pedaled it. And every time your feet went around once, the big wheel went around once. And they had to have the big wheel so that you would cover enough and go fast enough that you wouldn't fall over. Okay. Uh, later, the big improvement when they started putting a chain connecting this wheel to that wheel and different size gears, which allowed you to um, not have to have this humongous wheel, and you could have equal size wheels on each side. And it was also a lot more stable. These are very dangerous and hard to get on and off of and so forth. So uh, they would have made learning to ride a bike a whole lot more challenging than it is already. All right. Uh, so anyhow, so we are going to do a bicycle lab and talk about how this works as a machine. All right. If you remember that gears and chains with gears on it like this are going to be wheel and axles, all right? Now, there's also levers. There's um, the handbrakes or levers and things like that, all right? Now, um, with our new bicycle, we have, the bicycle we're going to look at, we have three different cogs on the front, okay? There are three different size cogs with different number of teeth on it, and we have seven on the back, all right? That means you could do... It's a large, medium, small, and this has, you know, seven different sizes. You could do a large with each of the seven sizes. You could do the medium with each of the sizes. And you could do the small with each of those sizes on the back, which means there's a total of 21 gears, which is probably more than anybody short of some kind of <coughs> racing, uh, you know, Olympic racer or something like that probably needs. But uh, I grew up three-speed, maybe a five-speed or a ten-speed, okay? It's usually a three-speed or a ten-speed. And that's yeah, probably all you really need, I think. But anyhow... Uh, my problem, I guess, is that I've always had ones that had 18, 15, 18, uh, 21 gears, whatever. Um, and before long, they only had one gear, and you're lucky if it stayed in that. And it usually wasn't the gear I wanted to be in. So uh, I was not very good at fixing the gears, apparently. And so there you are. All right. Now, the question is, what's the difference does it make? How many teeth are in each of these two cogs? Well, let's just say the first uh, cog has 36 uh, teeth. All right. And let's say that the rear gear has 24 teeth. Okay. As we talked about yesterday, that means for every time the front gear goes around once, this one would go around one and a half. I think I said one and a third yesterday. My bad. Um, <laughs> it would go one and a half because 12 more notches would be halfway around this one. So it would go one and a half times, which would make you cover more ground, give you more distance, and therefore more speed because you're covering more distance in the same amount of time. So it would give you more speed. And so that is called the speed advantage. We haven't talked about that before. This would be kind of like we said, things multiply distance. And in this case, that makes it multiply your speed. That is the speed advantage. All right. When a broom multiplies your distance, that increases how quickly you can uh, sweep the room. Okay. So it gives you a speed advantage. And basically, we take the number of the front teeth divided by the one on the back teeth. You could think of this as like the um, effort arm, because this is the one we're turning with the pedal. And this would be the resistance arm, the one that's turning the wheel. All right. And so it'd be um, RA over um, EA. I mean, I'm sorry, EA over RA. <clears throat> and that would give you 1.5, which is what we said. It would go around one and a half times. All right. Now, we can also do it the other way, which is the uh, resistance divided by the effort, which I think I said wrong yesterday, by the way. But anyhow, and you get two thirds. So it'd go around 0.67 times or... or uh, about two-thirds of the way around each time. Now, uh, the difference is that it multiplies the amount of force that it puts, but you don't go as far, okay? So, uh, it just kind of depends what you're looking for, okay? Um, you want one that multiplies your 
force that you apply on the back wheel, or do you want one that multiplies the distance that the wheel turns? All right. Now, the trade-off is uh, if you have a, a higher speed advantage, all right, um, cover more distance, but it takes more force. On the other hand, if you have a mechanical advantage uh, where the rear teeth uh, are bigger and this one's smaller, uh, this one will make you go as fast, but you won't have to use as much force. So that's kind of that trade-off, depending if you're going uphill and so forth. I would tell you more about that, but I never get good at using which gears for which because I never could go <coughs> get the gears to work that good. All right. Anyhow, so in this case, the speed advantage would be 1.5, so it's going to go around 1.5 times, and the mechanical advantage would be 0.67, and you can fill those in there. All right, now we're going to do a actual bicycle example up here, and I'm going to show it to you here in a second. But uh, first, I want you to figure out, we're going to use, it has 21 gears. We don't want to do all different 21 combinations. We don't have time for that. So we're going to do large gears. So if you just put a little L up in the corner, leave room for numbers of how many there are to large gears. So if you have a large gear in front, large gear in back, and then we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to do a large gear in the front and a small gear in the back. All right, then we're going to do the same thing with the medium. Since there's only three in the front, we're going to use all three of them. And we're going to medium with large in the back. And we're going to do a medium with a small gear in the back. Okay. And we're going to do a small gear in the front, small cog. And we're going to do large in the back. And we're going to do small in the front and small in the back all right we should probably have done one where we did just uh uh well, brain went dead okay uh, medium and medium just to see what the middle would be like but uh we're just going to do it like this okay and that will be our six uh different things that we're going to do so let me get the bicycle ready and we will move on to the next part all right here we are back at the ranch, so to speak. Okay, now if we turn this a little bit, you know, you'll see me, I know that'll break your heart, but there we go. All right, this is our cogs here. We have one out here, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's one here, one here in the middle, and then the one down here where the chain is actually on it, okay? Now what I've done is I've put a little white mark on it, all right, and we're gonna count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And I'm gonna cheat and I've already counted them. And there are actually 42 teeth. So all the ones that say the front gear large, if you will put 42 teeth on that one. Okay, uh, now we don't really need the, uh, um, let's do this uh, large back gear. All right, so let me uh, show you that here in just a second, and here we go. Oh, while we're on this one, uh, we might as well go ahead and tell you the others. Okay, the medium gear, if you count these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, you would get up to 34, okay? And so where it says the uh, front gear is uh, <laughs> medium, you can put 34. And for the small gear, the one that's changed actually on right now, if you count those, there are actually 24 teeth, which would make sense because it is smaller. Okay. All right. Let me check and we'll move this and we'll go look at the back real quick. All right. Sorry about that. I hope I didn't moon anybody. All right. Uh, here we go. Um, on the back wheel, there are actually seven all right so you have seven of these uh gears back here different cogs that you could switch it on and that's why if you have different combinations of three here and seven back here you could have a total of 21 all together okay now if you count the large ones so this is for the rear gear rear gear that rhymes okay um but basically um the rear gear has on the large it has 28 teeth okay uh and just for the record you might write this down somewhere the middle one, the uh, fourth gear, I guess, uh, you got seven. So the middle one actually has 20 teeth. And finally, the small one, which will go in your chart, the small one has, for the rear gear, has 14 teeth. All right? So if you'll put those all in your uh, calculations. All right? Now, um, 
perhaps tomorrow, depending if we have a good bicycle that works good for that, uh, we will actually put the bicycle in these gears and then see how many times does it actually go around. And that's where it says wheel revolutions on your uh, thing. Okay. Uh, for example, right now, if we get that right there. Okay. And we get this one ready. Okay. So here we go. One, two, three. All right. So when this goes all the way around once, this goes about once. So this, the gear it's in right now, which is the small in the front, which is 24, to um, one of the middle ones in the back, is about a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so it goes almost one wheel of turn for that. But we will talk about that tomorrow. What I would like for you to do now is to fill out the rest of your chart. And I'll explain here in a second. Let me shrink this. All right. And we will finish the rest of this tomorrow, but I would like for you to put your numbers in here. All right. Uh, for example, for the large front gear, we said that is um, 42. So we we'll put that in where it says large front gear is 42 and 42. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, hang on. Uh, it went to dictionary on me. Don't ask me why, but uh, okay. So 42 and 42 here, um, the medium is 34 and yeah, I'm sure having trouble typing, but other than that, 34 and 34 and the small one is going to be um, 24. There we go, All right, 24 and 24. All right, and the large and small for the rear gear, Remember our uh, 28 for the large and half as much for 14 for the small. All right, if you'll fill the rest of those in, calculate your speed advantage and your mechanical advantage, and then we'll talk about re wheel revolutions uh, tomorrow. Okay, but I think that should uh, do it for today. So not too bad, not too strenuous. Hope you didn't hurt yourself or anything. And we'll talk about the rest of the worksheet tomorrow. Have a great day.